Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland. I'm Andrew. On the bench today is a pile of plastic junk, dollar store trash, harvested electronic parts, and random 3D resin printed bits that got printed but never used. In a radical departure from my regular die-cast customs, I'm attempting to build my first Trash Bash space cruiser. I've enjoyed watching these types of videos on YouTube and thought I'd give it a try for a change of pace for me and for you, my viewers, too. One thing I've been doing for a long time is taking old electronic things apart and saving the inner pieces. However, I've rarely put any of those pieces to any good use, so you're watching me harvest parts and figuring out how to glue things together and paint and weather a realistic looking spacecraft. This kind of model building is great fun, I can tell you that. So settle in with a fresh cup of coffee and enjoy my first scratch build trash bash, complete with trials, errors, and successes. You never know where the magic happens until you step out of your comfort zone. As well as all my jettisoned electronic parts, I've also been collecting these plastic gizmos and doodads, because you never know what's going to work well in one of these projects. Nothing ever gets thrown away around here is the main rule. I originally thought I'd start with this kid's super soaker water gun that I got at the dollar store for about four dollars, but once I took it apart I decided it looked more like the Nautilus from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, so in the end I decided to go with this flour container and a dish soap squirt bottle, but things are going to change and morph all the way through this build, so stand by. I don't have a sketch on paper, I've just got some ideas in my head and I start by cutting off the base of the dish soap container and hey, maybe that will make some kind of a cab on top of it. Maybe not. One of the first things I had to experiment with was what type of glue worked the best with these plastics. I started with a hot glue gun and I uh, wasn't tremendously successful and I find them messy to work with too. So super glue and baking soda seems to be the best way to go. You have to scuff up all of the smooth plastic surfaces both on the base pieces, the large ones, and also any of these add-ons that you use to get a good solid stick. You'll see I'm trying out these breakfast supplement drink bottles as rocket thrusters on the back. I can tell you now they're not going to make it to the end of the build, but that's what I started with in a concept. And now I'm scratch building some sci-fi looking wings out of styrene sheets. Alright, going to go up. Are they going to point down? Don't know. Great thing about working with styrene is you don't have to cut right through it, you can just score it with an X-Acto knife, like so, and then snap, crackle, pop it. They come apart with a nice clean straight edge. So of course I'm making two identical wings left and right. At this stage, they're both single sheet width. And now I'm going to use a couple of tricks that I first saw on Adam Savage Tested YouTube channel. Of course, he was a model builder for Industrial Light and Magic and the George Lucas, some of the Star Wars films. So I'll listen to what he has to say. He's an expert at working with styrene. I saw this in his how to do paneling video. Such a great channel and I put a link in the description below so you can find it. What I've done is traced out the original size of the two wings and now in pink drawing out some measurements that are slightly reduced in size around the edges. 
like so. I'll do my cutting on these interior pink lines. And I got a couple of cool tools to show you. This is actually a sheet metal cutter. It's called a nibbler tool. And look what it does. Cuts out a little notch like that. George Lucas would be so happy to see this Star Wars looking effect or you can put it right in the middle and make it appear like a longer notch. And then I've got this handheld razor blade cutter. And for smaller pieces like this, look what I can do. Ka-chunk! Perfect straight edge. Or, change the angle. Now I'm on a 45. And even these little snippets are never cast off. I'm going to use them. So, back to my wing and the relief pieces. Just glue them on with some Tamiya model glue. And I get a great stick with that. Styrene to styrene. Of course, this just welds it together. And greeblies is a new word. If you're not a Star Wars nerd, these are just the little pieces that come from anywhere and everywhere that add texture and relief to these models. The wings are experimental for me. So I've already primed them in gray before the rest of the model progresses at all. And I'm doing a black wash to see what kind of effect it gives me. All right, I like that. See the edges come out in a nice relief. I made this graphic so that I could accurately dissect a circle into eight surrounding pieces, which I apply here on the largest surface of the spacecraft, where I'm going to put this 3D printed battleship prow, if my memory serves me correctly, that was done more than a year ago for a project that it ultimately never became a part of. But it's got some awesome fire power on it. I put it on top of the ubiquitous Pringles can lid, like a rotating turret. And while that glue was setting up, I'm back to the Gribbly application. These are some little bedazzling circles from the dollar store. And ceramic floor tile spacers couple more little 3D printed parts that were to go on a war rig or something like that. It's starting to take shape. Bear in mind when you leave your respectful comments below on this build, there's no way to do it right or wrong. Whatever your imagination dictates, that's what you can do. This is the trigger mechanism from that hot pink super soaker that I didn't use. This is an interesting little greebly part that I downloaded for free from Thingiverse. I need to cut a little recess here in a square shape to fit it. And once this is in, it has the illusion of being in 3D relief, like you're looking down into some of the machined parts of the spacecraft. Kind of cool. Now I'm just working my way around the top, the bottom, the front, the sides, and adding pieces that I have from my mishmash collection of random bits. I hold it up and do a little flyby every now and then just to see that it's getting equal coverage. This is a coil of very soft aluminum tubing that I got from a craft store and I use this roller technique to make it perfectly straight. But now I need to put a 90 degree angle on both ends because I want these to stand out in relief couple of holes in each end and it looks like that. Huh. And just to prove that absolutely anything is grist for the mill, this is a safety cap from a spray can. You'll recognize the super glue tubes and here's the pull ring from a pop can. This turquoise bit is another part from the Super Soaker. 
that I glue onto a small hard plastic bottle. And there's the pull ring, for the nozzle from a super glue tube. Remember, nothing is junk around here. And a 0.2 millimeter piece of styrene with some more notches. A couple more greeblies. They don't look very big, but once it's all primed, it's going to give a really nice textured relief to this. Trust me on that. That's the fun part that's coming up. Here are some clear plastic cable clips, and I put a styrene rod inside and rounded the edges. Remember, I'm just making this up as I go. And then I decided that this prow looks like such a prominent part of the whole ship. I'm going to put some antennas up here. Antennae. Those are the thinnest styrene rods that I've got. A few more add-ons on the back. This will be an important focal point. And I like how it's looking. Or R2-D2. Must have had a really foul mouth. They bleeped out everything that he said in all of those movies. Alright, here's the fun. I've applied a little bit of primer here and there to this point, but now I'm giving it a fuller coverage. Exercising no patience because I'm not yet near finished with all the greeblies and add-ons, but I couldn't wait anymore. This step brings everything together. See that? Now it's starting to look like a real Star Wars type craft. So I continue on. I'm well ventilated in my hobby room and there's an exhaust fan on the spray booth and I'm wearing a mask as well because I'm going through a lot of spray primer here. Safety first. Or greeblies. I don't even know what this orange thing is. It's kind of rubbery. It was in the kitchen department of the dollar store. Those are little miniature clothespins that have broken in half. There's a bottle cap that a hole in it's going to serve as the reception point for the stand. I deep six the Pringles lid in favor of this 3D printed futuristic looking ring that's going to house the battleship Pro. Glued down well. There. I think that's an improvement. This is a Japanese saw that I've got with a fine blade and a coarser blade. I use that to lop off the end of the dish soap dispenser. And I had this old Death Star looking thing laying around with what was called a power node attachment. I'm going to put those together. This is what I thought would make the nose for the whole spacecraft. And now here's a special tip that I've learned from a YouTube channel called Cut Transform Glue, which I recommend to you, and I'll leave a link. It's how to make a cable from a spring and a heat shrink tube. It is often used for joining wires together, and as the name suggests, some heat application makes it shrink, and then it takes on the form of the spring underneath. Look at that. That's still flexible and pliable as you can see here. I've applied that as some kind of hose or cable. You decide what you want it to be. Hey, if you've made it this far in the video and you're still with me, why not give it a like and subscribe and be a new follower of Maple Leaf Customs for more content like this and the regular diecast car uploads. I'd sure love to know where you're watching from as well, so include that when you leave a comment for me. Thanks. A little more weaponry and firepower has been added to the wings, or if you have to clean your ears at any point during your space voyage, we got some Q-tips mounted there just for you. And now I'm applying the 3D resin printed rocket thrusters. These are replacing the original Activa mini bottles that I started with that I thought were a little bit too long. 
Here's where it is, all primed up to this point, and the wings have magically been attached now. Looking good so far, but there's still quite a bit of work to be done before I feel it's near the finish stage. But it's already a striking contrast to the empty kitchen containers that I started with. Can you ever have too many Greeblies? Well, here's a close-up of some actual Star Wars models. The answer is no. You can cover all the terrain you want with these. So I reach back into my bag of goodies and greeblies and start going with these mini discs. These clear ones are a little bit larger. Now I'm gluing them inside of these rings that I've already applied. Just a different kind of relief texture that I find to be interesting looking. And some googly eyes. Or if there's any turbulence, these things will shift around a little bit, but that's only until they get primed and painted as well, and they're just going to become round discs when I'm all finished. Here are some bracelet beads in cylindrical form, all in different colors. Super glue holds them in place wonderfully, and I'm just filling in holes randomly where I think something is required. Have you ever heard of the Canada Arm, or the Canadarm, which is part of the International Space Station? This has put Canada on the galactic map, and I thought my space cruiser needs something like that. So I fashioned one that's pretty similar, and on it goes to the top of the sphere at the very front for a place of prominence. This could be used, perhaps, to pass the maple syrup from ship to ship. I'll give this a spin around, going the latest and the last batch of Greeblies that have been applied. And you know I could have kept on going, but at some point you've got to say that's enough for now. And even the underside has been properly bedazzled. They're going to disappear with the next shot of primer application. Right now it just looks like a lot of junk that's been glued on, which is actually exactly what it is. <laughs> But I'll remedy that in very short order. Even the underneath has been fully detailed, and you see some landing thrusters that I've added on. And the very last bit to go on after the Canada arm are these tank cannons. As you can appreciate, they look like they might get caught on anything and break off with all the handling that I've had to do. So I've saved these for the very end. No one can say we aren't fully and adequately weaponized. I think I'd feel safer inside this one than in front of it. This is the last time I'll put some primer on here to turn all the colors into a uniform matte gray. There's the bird's eye view of everything before the final and very important stage of weathering. I've mixed up my own black and white acrylic paint with some homemade thinner to make this a real thin slurry and I've dropped the pressure on my air hose down to about 10 and I'm holding it back so this isn't giving a full color coating. This darker gray is simply shadowing and highlighting any of the raised pieces, and when I zoom in and show you, you'll see what a nice effect it is. I do go a bit darker into the thrusters for a burnt look. I've taped off two stripes on the wings that I hit with some orange. And when I unmask that, I think I've got just the right splash of color on here, and that'll serve a purpose pretty soon. The next weathering step is some panel liner, which brings out all of the textures and the details in these pieces, whether they're 3D printed or bottle caps. Now I can tell you I've touched every greebly on this with the panel liner, and that's a couple hundred of them. If there's any excess, I take it off with a Q-tip, just leaving a good shadow behind. Now I'm painting in a blackened glass 
in what I think would be the bridge of this spaceship, sort of the control center. And that cable that I made that was originally the black shrink tube got primer gray, so back to black for that with a hand brush. I find this to be one of the most pleasing and satisfying parts of the whole modeling process. And some decals on those orange stripes. MLC 188 is the build number. Maple Leaf Customs, build number 188. And on the side, in much smaller script, I've added a long call sign number, trash bash number one, 29th October 22. That's the only place that appears. And I need some help here from anyone who's watching who speaks Klingon or whatever language this UFO script is. I don't know what it says. If you don't like my driving, call this number. I don't really know. Remember the wing experiment and the black wash that I did way back in the beginning part? I'm not hitting the whole model with black wash now. Just parts that I think have been added on recently, like the tank turrets. They landed on an inhabited planet like Earth at one point and raided everything they could, and they're using some of the primitive weaponry that we have here on Earth. A little bit of sponge dabbing for a weathered look. Then I went around the whole model with a gray sharpie and lightly touched the edges to make them look space-worn too. It's all finished. Let's have a closer look. As the light highlights the ship and then fades, you can see the tremendous amount of detail that has gone into this one. And I have to say, for my very first Trash Bash space cruiser, 30 plus hours of work. I'm very pleased with how this turned out in the end, considering I started with a couple of empty plastic containers and just started adding what I had on hand. I'm not a sci-fi nut and I really don't know all the films, so this is not based on any other space ship that's been created in the past. This is just my imagination of what the rebel forces might have cobbled together. They raid a planet, they pillage everything they can, and they use what they take, put it on one of their own ships. I hope you've enjoyed this Trash Bash build. It's my best first effort that I've made. I'd sure love to hear your respectful comments below. Weigh in and tell me what you think. But thanks to all of you for visiting my channel today. Drive carefully on Earth or in space. It's coffee time.